Hey YouTube, how's it going? Six Speed here and today on Top Choice Audio, we are going to be recreating a bass inspired by the one and the only Ray Volpe. And the bass that we are going to be recreating today is actually the main bass from his new track, Program to Love. So, this is, this is just a little taste of what it's going to sound like. So if you guys are interested in learning how to make this, make sure to stay locked till the end. Okay, without further ado, we may as well jump over into the doll and get it started, boys. So here we go. Okay, so here's the initial preset. Um, I'll quickly open up the original patch so you guys can uh, can see what we're dealing with. There is a bit of process or post processing on here. Um, nothing too big or major, um, but yeah, it it is. It does make a, a difference in the in the uh, overall tonality of the sound and helps bring it in together a lot more. But you still have a sick bass without that post processing. But anyways, here we go. So here is a, a picture of what the bass tab or the oscillator tab looks like, and then here is the FX tab. Um, it's it's all pretty simple stuff, you know. Uh, nothing too complex. Actually, it's a pretty simple sound, um, but it it uh, it sounds dope and sounds complex and sick for for a growl. So big ups Ray Volpe for this. We love you. Anyways, let's get on with it. Um, so for oscillator A, we are going to go to analog and then basic shapes. We're gonna bring the octave down to minus one and bring the wavetable position up to seven. We're gonna bring the level all the way down to zero as well as putting on FM from B. We're gonna bring that up to a whopping, uh, you know, and I say again, a whopping 39% because, you know, 40 is just too much. But uh, actually, in all seriousness, um, you the 39% um, on the FM is a big thing. You do change kind of the overall tonality of the sound pretty drastically. Uh, just by by moving that uh, that FM around, you know, from 38 to 37 and stuff like that. So if you're interested in making the sound your own, that's a good way of doing it and playing with it is just by tweaking that FM knob until you find something that you're into. So once you get that FM knob situated nice and pretty at 39%, the next thing that you want to do is you want to move on to putting your LFOs onto your knobs in order to modulate them. So now let's move on to LFO one. We're gonna put LFO one on the level for 100% because we, I mean, that's our main oscillator, but I mean, that's where our sound's coming from. Um, next, where we want to put this bad boy is we want to put it on our FM, but it's only for 30, 13%. Um, it's really not too much at all. Um, once that's good, uh, that's pretty much it for oscillator A. Um, now we want to move on to oscillator B. Oscillator B is easy too. We're also going to go to digital, and then we are going to go to sub bass underscore one. Next, we want to take the wavetable position, put it up to 84. Um, again, don't think it's super important because it doesn't seem to change too, too much. Actually, it doesn't really change at all. Um, I just leave it at 84 around there, that's good. And then we're gonna put some uh, pulse width modulation onto this bad boy. Um, we're only gonna bring it to 89%. That's a little low. Here we go. Yeah, and we're gonna bring the level all the way down to zero. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it for oscillator B. So let's do the sub oscillator. Make sure to turn direct out on, bring level all the way down and uh, put LFO uh, one on to the level for 100%. We're gonna bring the octave down to minus one and that is it for the oscillators. Now let's move on to the filter. We're basically going to go with the phase 24 plus flanger filter. Uh, make sure to turn on A and B so they're both going through the filter and being processed by it. And we're gonna bring the cutoff down to 191 hertz. Uh, where, there we go. Cool. Um, we're gonna bring the resonance up to 56%. And then we're going to throw LFO1 onto the cutoff. And we are going to make sure to go 
hold down shift alt and then click so it goes to the 50 50 mode and then we're going to bring it to minus 15 just like so um, and then that is it for the uh, filter and let's turn on mono and go to the LFO now so we're gonna play with the LFO shape so for the LFO shape just take this middle dot and drag it into the about halfway through the third column in the grid here um, bring the arch up a little bit put another point just below in the um, eighth column here I believe it is just near the end of the line not on it just kind of off it a little bit to give it a little bit of a release and then we're gonna bring this up again so it gives us a nice little arc um, and then that's it for the LFO shape everything in the oscillator tab is pretty much handled let's just quickly throw a uh, macro onto the rate so that we can play with that in the end uh, make sure to click do the shift alt click so that we get it so it's only on one half instead of split 50 50 and then drag it down so that it's just going up to about an eighth note uh, which is about there which is about eight um, eight percent with the LFO so that pretty much does that rename this LFO now let's move on to the effects um, we're going to be using a hyper dimension and we're also going to be using distortion as well as a filter um, we are going to bring the mix down on the hyper and we're gonna bring the mix up a little bit on the dimension um, and the two we're gonna bring the drive up to about 32 percent and the filter we're gonna throw a combs filter on there I love combs filters I use them personally on everything they are one of my favorite filters and uh, they're starting to get a lot of notice in the uh, the dubstep scene which is great so um, make sure to experiment with combs because I think that that is going to be a pretty big breakthrough for some sound design stuff that we got going. But we're going to just bring the cutoff down a little bit to about 61 hertz, I think it is. Let's just double check. Uh, 36 hertz, sorry. So bring the combs filter down to 36 hertz approximately. right there and uh, let's check out the sound see how it's sounding so far so that's pretty close it sounded a little quiet um, so to deal with that what we do um, is we simply go over and we grab a multiband dynamics from Ableton stock throw an OTT on there leave it just as is um, I'm gonna throw a camel crusher on there um, but in theory you pretty much could use any um, distortion plugin that's really there just to give it a little bit more distortion but I'm gonna use the British clean plugin uh, duplicate the OTT Put it on the other side of the uh, Camel Crusher. I'm gonna bring this down to about 30%. That's good. And then duplicate the Camel Crusher with the British Clean again. Bring it to the other side of the OTT. And then we're gonna throw a little bit of reverb on here. Where is reverb? Uh, R, 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 there we go. Cool, and then we're just gonna bring this down to like 7, 12%, 11%, somewhere in there. Uh, so let's give the sound a quick a quick little test to roo here and see how it sounds. So yeah, that's uh that's pretty much it for the tutorial today, guys. Uh, the only thing that I have left to really show you is that in order to get the uh, the the pitch modulation that you hear um, and the, the, to get the full movement that you hear when you listen to Ray Volpe's actual track uh, program to love is what you can do is go here and then you see this little bad boy over here the pitch bend just click on that so it comes up when you're in automation mode on Ableton and then just click that little plus button down there so it gets its own track and then from there you can choose to edit it and this is how I got this effect
versus this, which is without the pitch bend. So as you can see, still a dope sound, but it's just not the same, you know? So make sure to add that pitch bend, experiment with it, and also don't forget to modulate the LFO because we threw that in there, because that's how uh, uh, you just get more movement and diversify your sounds. Well, there you have it, you guys. That is how to recreate the main bass from Ray Volpe's Program to Love. I hope you guys learned something today, as well as got some inspiration to be able to make some new tracks, because that's what this is all about, right? Trying to inspire the people to keep moving forward and progress our industry as much as we can. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. Um, make sure to comment and uh, like and subscribe. Let us know what you guys want to see in future content, uh, different bass tutorials that you'd like to see, as well as maybe any breakdowns or recreations of songs that we can try to do for you. Um, we got lots and lots of content already uh, uh, in store and finished and ready to roll out for you guys. So I hope you guys are ready for 2019. This is going to be the year for Top Choice Audio. So thanks again for watching. Six Speed out.